Hey, hey, what's going on guys? In this module, we're gonna be diving into how to use async await within the Swift concurrency framework. So in this video, we're gonna do an overview of asynchronous programming and what it is. Then we're gonna cover how to use async await and also how to use async throws and how that's gonna to relate to our last module with the do, try, catch, and throw stuff for better error handling. And then we're gonna build an awesome sample app to go over how we can use all of this stuff in a real life application. So. What is asynchronous programming, guys? Well, first let's talk about the opposite of that, which is synchronous programming or synchronous code. And that's where tasks execute one after the other. So they don't execute at the same time or concurrently. This can obviously be inefficient, especially when one task might take an unknown amount of time to complete before the other task can begin. So with asynchronous programming, you can start a task and continue with other work while waiting for that task to finish. Another way to put that is you can run those tasks concurrently or at the same time. And this is the foundation of Swift concurrency. Guys, that's where the term concurrency comes from. It refers to running multiple tasks at the same time, which is asynchronous instead of running them synchronously, which means you can only do one at a time and before one task can complete, or get started, the previous task, if there is one, has to have finished. An example I like to give to illustrate synchronous versus asynchronous processes is imagine you are at a bank and there's a really long line of people in front of you and there's only one teller. Well, synchronous processing is having to help those people one at a time and you can't help the next person until you have helped the current person at the counter, right? One task cannot begin until the previous task has completed or the task at hand has completed. An asynchronous example of that situation would be if there are multiple bank tellers and multiple people could be helped at the same time. So you have the same task running, which is helping a person at a counter, but now you can execute multiple tasks at the same time. That's sort of the essence of running tasks concurrently versus running them one at a time or synchronously. So let's go ahead and keep going with how to use async await guys. So what is this? So Swift's async await syntax makes it easier to read and write asynchronous code. With async, you define functions that perform asynchronous tasks. When you call an async function, you use await, which essentially tells Swift pause here until the task is complete, then continue on to the next line of code. So now that we've covered that, guys, let's go ahead and dive into Xcode and actually get some practice with using async await and check out the sample app that we're going to be building. And before we hop into the code, guys, the full version of this course, the pro version of this course is available on the website at stephancodes.com in the fundamentals section here. So this is obviously just one of the modules taken from the course that I'm posting on YouTube for free. If you guys want access to the whole thing with a bunch of additional modules and more in-depth explanations and better examples, go ahead and check us out at stephancodes.com. And that is available for a one-time purchase or you guys can sign up to become a member with us. And for less than a coffee a day, you guys can get access to all of our pro courses and app templates. So that will allow you to sign up for any one of these courses, our pro app clones, our fundamentals. It also gets you access to all of these app templates. We just launched this amazing new design library that you guys will get lifetime access to as well. And guys, the, for that low cost a month, you get access to all of this stuff. It unlocks the entire site with the exception of the Pro Plus content. That is a higher tier of content that we just introduced. And if you guys want access to that, you can become a life member to get full unlimited access to everything, including Pro Plus content. So guys, let's go ahead and jump back into the code now and get started with the rest of this module. So I have Xcode opened up here, guys. I have a new module created called Async Await Module. And what we're gonna be doing really quickly is checking out the sample app we're gonna build before we get started. So we're gonna mimic like loading data from an API here, guys. So as you can see here, we have some mock users that we simulated fetching from some sort of backend. And we're also gonna have another process to like save or update the, their data. So let's imagine we wanted to change all of their email addresses. Right now, everyone is at gmail.com. If I hit save data, then it's going to show some progress indicator and it's going to update all of their data to have the new state, which is at appstuff.com instead of at gmail.com. So let's go ahead and now dive into Xcode and get started with how we are going to use async await to build something like this out. To start things off, let's go ahead and build out a data model to represent our users and a list that we're gonna put them all inside of. So really quickly, I'm just going to paste over my user data model. Very simple, ID, name, email. And then 
Guys, we are going to create an array of users on our view, like so. And then we are going to create a list that displays all of our users here. So we can type this out, vstack list for each. Oh, look how smart Swift is, man. The autocomplete is awesome. For each user's user in, we have text user.name. Let's go ahead and make a vstack and say we want the text user.name. Text user.email. And let's make our alignment on this leading. So this is our UI, guys. Super simple to put that together. If any of this is unclear to you, like what a struct is or how to build out that list or any of that stuff, guys, I highly recommend going over to our site at stephancodes.com and checking out the programming fundamentals with Swift course and the Swift UI bootcamp. So this course obviously assumes that you have basic knowledge of Swift UI and programming fundamentals with Swift. If you don't, just go ahead and stop taking this one now and go ahead and hop over to those, finish them up, and then come back to the Swift concurrency course. Um, but for the rest of you guys, I'm sure you're pros, and we can go ahead and keep going with how to use async await. In a real application, guys, this information would be coming from some sort of API, and I would implement a view model that would be responsible for fetching that data. So let's go ahead and do that now. In this same file, we can say class async await view model. And this is going to be an observable object. And like I said, if any of this stuff doesn't make sense, guys, it's covered in the Swift UI bootcamp. And we're going to create a published var for our users here. And that's going to be an array of users. And then we would have some sort of function to fetch our data. And then we could take our users from here and we could go ahead and say, let users equal that and self dot users equals our users. And now we can implement our view model in our um, view guys as a state object, say async await view model. And then what we could do is on init of this guy, we could say fetch data, right? And here we'll just replace that with view model dot users. So now we have extracted the responsibility of fetching our data and providing it to our view into a view model, which is what you will see most of the time in Swift UI applications. We're not going to be doing anything with the MV architecture here. We are going to be sticking to MVVM, which I personally think is the best way to go. So next up guys, we are going to be mimicking fetching this data from an API or a backend. So I have a quick diagram of what that process entails. So let's imagine we are the client and we want to fetch some data from a backend server. So we're gonna make some sort of request to our server and that server is going to give us back a response which is going to mimic this data that we have here. So the first thing we need to do is mark our function here as async. So this is our async keyword. So this tells our compiler that this function is asynchronous. So that immediately throws an error async call in a function that does not support concurrency. So here's what's happening, guys. For those of you that don't know, code executes synchronously, right? So we have all of these lines of code, right? And our compiler goes through one by one from one all the way down to, in this case, 56, and executes each line of code synchronously, one by one. That's how your compiler works. But now we have code that can execute asynchronously or in a concurrent environment. So we can't just call that in this synchronous context here. So to solve this problem, one, we need to say await, and that is going to give us the same error. What we can do is then just cut this, and we're going to create this task, guys. So if we look at the documentation for a task, it is a unit of asynchronous work. We can just go ahead here, open up some brackets, and paste our operation in there. So basically what this does is create some sort of task and then we place our asynchronous operation within that task. So you guys will notice that you can run as many of these tasks as you want and everything is still good to go, right? So we're gonna do a deep dive into tasks in the next module as you can see here, guys. Just know that in order to execute asynchronous code, which is what this is, in a synchronous context, which is what this is, we need to do that within a task. So now guys, we are going to await this result. 
Well, guess what? Right now it's happening instantly, right? So let's go ahead and mimic or mock up some sort of delay that is going to uh, say like one second before we get our data back, right? So I'm gonna paste this line of code in here. This is how we use a delay using the task object. We can say dot sleep and just do this with your, uh, with these nanoseconds, guys. You're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine zeros and separate them with underscores. And this is going to be a one second delay. So now you guys will notice that like, let's just go ahead and trigger our redraw of our preview. Our data is not gonna come back for a second. And if I change this to two, it's gonna take two seconds to come back. So this is sort of the essence of async await here, guys. We have marked this function as an asynchronous function and this await keyword creates what is known as a suspension point in our code. And it's going to wait for this process to complete until we can go to the next line of code. To see this happening in real time, let's go ahead and add some print statements. Let's go ahead and say print entered task. And we can go here and say print completed task. So we're no, we'll notice guys that this doesn't come back until this process completes. So let's go ahead and add a print statement in our fetch data function at the end of it. Print did fetch users. And let's go ahead and make this the root view of our application. So grab async await module, oops, copy that, go to your app folder and paste that guy right there. And let's run this bad boy and pay attention to the console guys. We can see here that we were getting some back from the preview, but I want us to actually just run this on the simulator. It's a lot cleaner and the print statements will be a lot more clear. So you guys will notice that it's just gonna take a little bit of time for it to launch. We'll start getting print statements back here in just a second. So we entered our task. Ooh, check that out. Did fetch users and then completed tasks. So don't worry about this red error really quick. Uh, for now guys, we'll fix that later. I wanna run this again so we can see it happening in real time. Entered task, two seconds later, did fetch users and then completed task. So let's hop back into our module and let's just uh, sort of dive through this logic here. So we see here that first it enters the task, then it awaits the completion of this process, which takes in this case, two seconds. And then we get this print statement back. So let's bring this up and then we get our completed task print statement, guys. So that's a great introduction as to how to utilize the async await keywords within the Swift concurrency framework, guys. I have some notes up here that I wanna paste for you that are the important takeaways from this video before we move on to the next one where we're gonna continue with building our sample app. So we notice that an async function requires the use of await when called. So when we mark a function with the async keyword, we have to, when we call it, utilize the await keyword to wait for that result to come back before we continue on with our code execution. So an async func can also not be called from a synchronous context. So guys, this applies to point three as well. We noticed that we couldn't just call this from a synchronous context. We had to wrap it in a task. And that is because this creates like a task of asynchronous work that our system will execute and the system handles the rest of that stuff for us. But it, like we said before, code executes synchronously and as it's going line by line, if we wanna utilize an async function, we have to wrap that in a task so it can execute asynchronously and the system handles the rest of the work for us. So like I said, that is gonna wrap it up for this video, guys. It was just a quick introduction on how to use async await. In the next one, we are going to keep going with building out our sample app and get a little bit more complex with this async await Swift concurrency stuff. So get excited for that. We'll see you there. Peace.